Hey everybody, Andy from Tennis Euphoria bringing you my review of the Wilson Ultra V4. This is the 300 gram version, probably the most popular version out there. It's 100 square inches, 317 swing weight with a high stiffness at 70. We've got a slight change in the beam in this iteration. Mine was a little bit under spec. I never really find that Wilson rackets are totally on spec, which is um, you know always a bit of a shame, but I guess they are very much mass manufactured. You have here a really nice looking racket. Um, the new paint jobs with Wilson rackets are, are great. Um, noticeable that the PWS system, the infamous three and nine lumps on the um, uh, Wilson rackets of the past has gone here. Um, that technology um, behind it apparently does survive um, in those grooves that you could see, but nevertheless, it does look a little bit different in that regard. I have hit the three previous iterations of the Ultra 100. I always found them to be uh, pretty brittle is probably the, the best um, description I could give, um, lacking some sort of reliability around control. I always felt um, quite maneuverable, um, but ultimately not really rackets for me. That's not to say that they were terrible rackets, particularly uh, I prefer control orientated rackets, of course. Um, and you might be into power rackets, in which case they've, they've probably done a good job for you previous. But I think with this line, um, you do have now a improvement on what you had before. So the 45 material that is in the carbon uh, does seem to change the feel a little. Apparently it's um, going to improve comfort levels and I haven't suffered with any comfort issues from hitting any ultra before. Um, certainly I didn't with this one and I'm lucky really not to have arm issues and I look after my myself from a physical perspective. Um, but you kind of get a gut feel with this one that it would be more comfortable and less likely to give you arm issues compared to the previous iterations. The feel is quite surprising because you have a 70 RA, you immediately think of something that is probably then quite brittle and powerful. But it, um, if you were to hit it without knowing that and it was totally blacked out, I don't think many people would guess that it's a 70 RA. I think that 45 material seems to change the feel. It almost feels quite sort of plush, dare I say, which is quite surprising. And I'm very aware that they are diametrically opposed descriptions. But um, certainly, uh, I think if you were to um, hit this racket without knowing what it is, as I say, you wouldn't guess that it was a 70 RA. In terms of the power levels, so this is a powerful racket. My challenge with powerful rackets is that it tends to change how I play. Um, in, in many respects, I'm very aware that it might improve my effectiveness on court because of course you get easier depth and tennis is made a bit easier, particularly on your serve, you get a bit more power. My challenge is that it tends to mean that I shorten my strokes a little, I get a little bit lazy, I tend to counter punch and just um, sort of push and block returns. Um, and that for me just isn't as fun as trying to play an all court game. And then the challenge that I have, and I think a lot of other players have who, who can generally play relatively well, will find that they don't necessarily get the total trust in this frame. And dare I say a lot of other um, all out power frames because you never feel totally at one um, in terms of confidence of where the ball is going to land. Um, nevertheless, with this one, once I'd adjusted um, my technique a little and had found the right depth, I was certainly able to play relatively effectively. One criticism that I would have was that I could never quite settle in totally to finding the right depth. Um, I think that I was there and then I would quite randomly not get the response from the string bed that I was expecting. And that is something that I think is carried over maybe with that 45 material, who knows, but that's a bit of a clash characteristic. Um, I've heard people say that people can interchange between the Clash 100 and this racket, even though the stiffness ratings are massively different and actually play fairly effortlessly between the two. And I'm kind of not surprised by that. Um, but for me, that transcends into the weakness within the racket. You can never 100% judge 
where the ball is going to land um, with regards to depth control. Now, in terms of um, accuracy, which I think is um, sort of slightly different in terms of angle hitting, left to right hitting, then it's um, probably a little bit better than that lack of depth accuracy in finding your targets. And the role that the racket does tend to play relatively well across most strokes. So just getting something on the ball and batting it back, you of course get good depth. The racket actually does play with some nice slice, uh, which was a pleasant surprise. Um, the only thing I'd say it was lacking a little was the loads of spin that um, that is claimed. But I suppose if you were after a racket loaded with power and spin, then you wouldn't be looking here anyway. You'd be focusing in on uh, extreme lines um, from head. Probably also you look at the clash a little bit more um, and of course you'd be looking down the uh, Babalat Pure Aero route. So other things um, to note then, I'd abbreviated my game and found that this was actually quite a good racket to counter punch with. If your uh, game style is to frustrate your opponent, kind of dig in, just hit depth, not necessarily try and hit pinpoint precision accuracy um, and just um, play a, a deep consistent game then this could be a really good option for you. I did find that some um, sort of fairly advanced level uh, teenage players played with the racket briefly and quite enjoyed it. Um, I think you get a little bit more power, sort of brute force power from the Babalat Pure Drive if you are looking to uh, consider this next to the Pure Drive. But I would guess, uh, my gut feel is, is that this possibly is a little bit more comfortable um, over a long term period of hitting compared to the Babalat Pure Drive. Um, here's a good example of just um, some of the racket strength. So, um, I said that I'd do this, but I basically would just try not to win the point or try not to lose it either. Um, it's just quite a nice racket to chip back a relatively deep return when you're on the run. Um, very frustrating for the other player, but you get something on it and the ball goes back with interest wherever you want to chip it. Um, so dare I say, if you are uh, maybe a um, intermediate player who relies on just trying to get everything back, or if you're an advanced in terms of age, aging player who's looking for a bit of extra help on power and doesn't necessarily rely on um, brilliant shot making, but just being consistent and getting things back, uh, this could be a good option for you. Um, hope that that was of interest. The only th other thing I would note is the one thing that is very notable is that this is quite a fast and manoeuvrable frame and the relative, um, uh, I suppose, relationship between um, manoeuvrability and stability is pretty good. Sometimes the more manoeuvrable a frame is, uh, it can lack stability. That isn't really the case here for quite a manoeuvrable frame or actually a very manoeuvrable frame it's relatively stable uh, not as stable as others out there uh, but that sort of relationship is, is pretty good so all in all a fairly good review i think it's an improvement of the line um, of course as you're probably picking up it's not necessarily one that would go to the top of my recommendations list for everybody um, but it certainly has a place hope that that's of interest and um, give the video a like if it was i'll be back with some more reviews now uh, now that i have a fresh stock of things to review for you um, see you soon